A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. Most admirable and worthy of everlasting remembrance was the mother who saw her seven sons perish in a single day, yet bore it courageously because of her hope in the Lord. Filled with a noble spirit that stirred her womanly heart with manly courage, she exhorted each of them in the language of the ancestors with these words. I do not know how you came into the existence in my womb. It was not I who gave you the breath of life, nor was it I who set in order the elements of each of you. Nor was it I who set in order the elements of which each of you is composed. Therefore, since it is the creator of the universe who shapes each man's beginning as he brings out the origin of everything, he in his mercy will give you back both breath and life because you now disregard yourselves for the sake of his law. Antiochus, suspecting insult in her words, thought he was being ridiculed. As the youngest brother was still alive, the king appealed to him, not with mere words, but with promises on oath to make him rich and happy if he would abandon his ancestral customs. He would make him his friend and entrust him with high office. When the youth paid no attention to him at all, the king appealed to the mother, urging her to advise her boy to save his life. After he had urged her for a long time, she went through the motions of persuading her son. In the region of the cruel tyrant, she leaned over close to her son and said in their native language, Son, have pity on me. You carried, I carried you in my womb for nine months, nursed you for three years, brought you up, educated you, and supported you to your present age. I beg you, child, to look at the heavens and the earth and see all that is in them. Then, you will know that God did not make them out of existing things. And in the same way, the human race came into existence. Do not be afraid of this executioner, but be worthy of your brothers and accept death, so that in the time of mercy, I may receive you again with them. She had scarcely finished speaking when the youth said, what are you waiting for? I will not obey the king's command. I obey the command of the law given to our fathers through Moses. But you, who have contrived every kind of affliction for the Hebrews, will not escape the hands of God. The word of the Lord. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hear, O oh Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. My steps have, not, my steps have been steadfast in your paths. My feet have not faltered. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Lord, 
when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. But I in justice shall behold your face. On waking, I shall be content in your presence. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Alleluia, so above I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory be, be to you, you O Lord. Lord. While the people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem and they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said, a noble man went off to a distant country to obtain the kinship for himself and then to return. He called ten of his servants and gave them ten gold coins and told them, Engage in trade with these until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and sent a delegation after him to announce we do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining the kingship, he had a servant call to whom he had given the money to learn what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Sir, your gold coin has earned ten additional ones. He replied, Well done good servant. You have been faithful in this very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. Then the second came and reported, your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. And to this servant too, he said, you take care of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you because you are a demanding man. You take up what you did not lay down, and you harvest what you did not plant. He said to him, With your own words I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a demanding man, taking up what I did not lay down and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return, I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by, he said, take the gold coin from him and give it to the servant who has 10. But they said to him, sir, he has 10 gold coins. He replied, I tell you, to everyone who has more will be given, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now, as for those enemies of mine who did not want me as their king, bring them here and slay them before me. After he has said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we are celebrating the memorial of Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, who 
who lived in the 13th century. We are told that she was the daughter of the king of Hungary, and she was given in marriage at the age of about 13 to an, another noble person, and she had three children with him. What is interesting about the life of Elizabeth of Hungary is the fact that finding herself in a position of privilege, being the daughter of a king, getting married to a noble person, she did not just think about herself. Rather, she made it her life mission to take care of the poor and the sick wherever she found them. So even after her husband died and she did not receive proper care and treatments from those who took charge of the kingdom, she still kept doing that. We are told that she built hospitals and in some of the hospitals, she took care of the sick herself. You know, sometimes when people find themselves in position of privilege, they think they don't have to serve. They think others must serve them. That is not the kind of example the saints give us. The saints remind us that in whatever position we find ourselves in, especially when we are in a position of privilege, we should serve the less fortunate. We should serve the less privileged. Because that is precisely the reason why God puts us there. The people of the world don't know this, but we Christians do. We know that when you are in a position of privilege, you serve those at the bottom. And as we continue to read around this time, stories about the end time, stories about judgment, and how those who have gone before us remain faithful in the face of persecution, in the face of death, we should also be encouraged so that we will remain faithful and wherever we find ourselves, continue to serve the people around us and especially those who are less privileged, like the example Elizabeth of Hungary has given us today. Let us rise and pray. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that our holy shepherds in the church may be God's good servants, working with the wealth of grace entrusted to them to bring to the Lord a great profit and souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That we may be among those servants approved by the king for our diligence and imagination in using the resources he has given us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. That God may take under the shadow of his wings all those who have asked our prayers filling them with mercy and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have accepted death and passed into eternity, that they may behold God's face and awakening be content in his presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The silence of our hearts, let us continue to pray our personal intentions. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. God our Father, 
In your mercy, hear the prayers of your children who gather before you this morning, who are participating in this Mass, and grant us your grace of faithfulness. Even as we go through the difficulties and challenges of life, may we not abandon our walk with you, but ever remain close by you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.